On today's episode of Lutherville, we'll be answering the question, does the government ban off-grid housing? Does the government ban off-grid housing? Well, depending upon where you look and how you look things up, it might kind of seem that way sometimes. But that's really not the case at all. So there, there's just some restrictions and stuff, but you're kind of free if it's your land to build off the grid, generally. Exactly. See, a lot of times people run into trouble because they'll try to get off the grid when they're in the grid. <laughs> so like in county lines and that kind of stuff. So you basically need unincorporated land. Is that kind of exactly. easier? It makes it far easier. But then you hear these stories about people who live in a city and they try to just disconnect their electricity and throw up a bunch of solar panels. <laughs> well, you can't do that. Okay, then you're breaking the law and the government's going to be against that. Okay. But when you're out in a place like this, from my experience so far, everybody has been wonderfully cooperative. That's great. Yeah. And a lot more options. Freedom. Exactly. I mean, look, I, I was born and raised in the rock and roll capital of the world, spending most of my professional life building websites for Walt Disney. And now I'm a skateboarder in California. <laughs> I mean, you don't get much more all-American than that. You know, but I, I've, I've never been much into politics. You know, the truth is we're all in the same boat, folks. We're all on the same side, sharing the same little planet. We may have different opinions on how to run things, but ultimately, we're all trying to do what we think is best. We all want the same things. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Building a house is always going to require dealing with government and politics. Our fellow Americans need to remember that the government isn't some kind of vindictive alien from another planet. <laughs> The government is ordinary citizens like you and me. Every time you want to use the word government, to replace it with the phrase, we the people. Because when you start to view politics from that perspective, it makes you understand that we're never subjected to the rules of a faceless political power. We the people share the responsibility. Good or bad, right or wrong, unjust or fair, we the people always have the power to change, for better or worse. Now, the bureaucracy and red tape of government often receives a bad reputation. And with the creation of Lutherville, I wanted to prove to my fellow Americans that our elected officials and politicians and city planners and law enforcement are fellow citizens who work for the people. You know, they're good men and women with families just like you. And the way they have treated me has proven they're eager to empower and encourage intrepid law-abiding members of our society to make our dreams a reality. Every step of the way, that is exactly what I have encountered. State and county officials and San Bernardino law enforcement have been wonderfully helpful and cooperative and supportive. There have been many documented cases of people who attempt to live off-grid and they end up being harassed by authorities and by apparent political agendas. There are plenty of hack news reporters trying to boost their ratings and backwater conspiracy theorists who love to sensationalize these stories. They'll title inflammatory articles claiming it's illegal to live off the grid and the state is outlawing our personal freedoms and forcing people to pay for utilities, but this is simply not true. When you take the time to look more closely into these stories, you start to discover the news is only giving you half the facts. They aren't telling you all the details. I mean, when you investigate these frivolous news items, it turns out that, you know, the homeowner stopped paying property taxes, or they were operating tourist parks without permits, or doing something unsafe for their neighborhood and breaking the law. And when interviewed, these folks never seem very articulate or well-educated. <laughs> You know, they fail to research any of the applicable codes and regulations. They ignore procedures, and you can't do those things. You need to follow the rules. You need to get proper legal permits. Just because you own a house or some land doesn't give you free reign to do anything you want. Right. And now that's not to say the citizen is always in the wrong. Sometimes homeowners are certainly victims of unjust policies or corrupt politicians. There are clearly a few cases where people have been treated unfairly. There are definitely times when immoral officials seek to enforce unjust laws. However, in most of these cases, when you dig a little deeper, you'll find people who are supposedly being targeted by the authorities already live in the city and they just disconnect their electricity and throw solar panels up on the roof without permission. <laughs> exactly. And no, you can't do that, okay? There are municipal codes in a city which regulate the construction and installation of utilities. I mean, see, as a society, we need these regulations to keep our communities safe. These laws are not evil, fascist oppression like the crazy people try to frighten you with. They are rational standardizations for a civilized society. You need 
electrical utility regulations to make sure no one is overloading the power grid by demolishing their garage and installing a 10 million BTU air conditioner in their backyard, right? You want these laws in place to make sure your neighbor doesn't blow up half a city block by taking it upon himself to disconnect a gas line and hook it up to a homemade flame-throwing dragon sculpture. <laughs> oh boy, which actually <laughs> sounds like it'd be pretty cool. I mean, not yeah. the blowing up the neighborhood part, wow. but the dragon, I like it. <laughs> So while municipal codes in cities are very strict, there are also laws and rules in place for living out in the county as well. Despite the laws being more lax in unincorporated areas, you still need to conform to these rules. For example, imagine you have an empty parcel of land right next to your house. Someone buys that land and you say, my neighbor has the right to do whatever he wants, it's his land. But what if your neighbor says, great, I'm glad you feel that way. I'm gonna build a toxic waste plant in my front yard. Thanks for giving your permission, neighbor. Uh, are you going to be okay with that? Or will you want some laws and rules in place to make sure your crazy neighbor can't build a toxic waste plant in their front yard? Just because you own the land doesn't mean you can do anything you want with it. You right. have to follow zoning codes. You have to conform to the laws of the state and the county. It doesn't matter if you live in a primitive tribe in the jungle or a condo in New York City or a prison in Moscow or a humble abode in the middle of the Mojave Desert or a suburb in Ohio, <laughs> you still need to comply with what your culture allows you to do. Yes. And having said all of that, you know, you can't blame the authorities and politicians of municipalities for being unsupportive of off-grid housing inside the grid. Right. That makes no sense. When you choose to live in a city with neighbors and water and sewage and electricity and gas lines, obviously the politicians and utility companies are not going to be supportive of you haphazardly disconnecting those utilities. The men and women who work for those utility companies have mouths to feed and want to keep their jobs. You can't blame those companies for lobbying the politicians to make sure all the homes must legally remain serviced by the grid. Plus, for really basic safety reasons, you can't have random homes disconnected from the grid. The system only works when everyone participates in the organized whole. We hope that helps clarify things. No, we have found no evidence of a totalitarian conspiracy <laughs> or authoritarian regime forbidding off-grid housing. You just can't go violating building codes or take a house that's built inside the grid and start arbitrarily disconnecting it. It gets far easier to construct an off-grid house when you actually build it off the grid. And that is why Lutherville is located on unincorporated land. Building out here, California State and San Bernardino County officials have already proven to be exceptionally professional and polite and respectful and supportive. Now once I make some other videos where I will explain the process of land acquisition and construction, I'll give you a lot more details about the various government agencies and personnel I have dealt with and maybe even interview a few of them for you. There's no such thing as a corrupt or benevolent organization. There are only corrupt or benevolent people. We hope we've clarified that there's no conspiracy against environmentally responsible projects like Galatea Meridian here in Lutherville. And if we ever find such corruption, we will be sure to tell you about it. Lutherville is an educational series inspiring kids and adults to become excited about innovations in science and technology by documenting the design and construction of a Mojave Desert homestead called Galatea Meridian. Witness the crazy story of how Eric Muss Barnes, an unemployed computer geek and struggling novelist, risks homelessness by spending most of his life savings to build an off-grid dream house in the middle of nowhere. Having purchased vast acres of the Old West, can Eric find a stable job and create his home before his money runs out? Take a journey where fortitude and a pioneering spirit continue to forge the American dream on the romantic landscape of the American frontier. Thanks for watching the latest episode of Lutherville. And please be sure to share with all your friends. And remember, if your ambitions don't scare you, they aren't big enough. <laughs>